Hey there, Evan Nathaniel Grimm. Welcome to my September 2023 forecast for all 12 zodiac signs. So I'm going to be walking you through the high level themes, the new and full moon, and then I'm going to dive into the impact for each and every zodiac sign. So you're going to want to stick around for that. So I'm going to share my screen uh, so that we can follow along together. And, um, you know, before I walk you through that new moon and that full moon, I want to talk about just the prevailing transits of the month and the trends. So overall, September uh, will have a lot of retrogrades. So we do have Venus stationing direct on September 3rd, but just as soon as that stations direct, Jupiter stations retrograde the next day. Uh, Uranus had just stationed um, retrograde at the end of August. Um, and then we continue to have Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, uh, and Mercury retrograde. So um, the point is that the pace is still a little slow. The momentum is not fully there compared to where it was in the first half of the year. This is just naturally something that, that occurs every year, of course. Uh, many of these planets retrograde um, each year. In the case of Venus, it's every you know one and a half years or so. Mercury retrogrades three to four times a year. Um, so by no means is this an exceptional case. Uh, this is something that, again, naturally occurs. Um, but um, you know it, it's still, of course, worth strategizing around. So, um, you know, again, Venus stationing direct the day before Jupiter stations retrograde. Um, and uh, Pluto, by the way, is going to be kind of nearing its stationary position. October 10th, actually, you know, is when its stations direct. But, you know, we're starting, it's starting to grind to a halt slowly. Um, and we're also kind of entering this sort of penultimate lunar cycle prior to the next eclipse season. So October is going to be all the fireworks of that solar eclipse in Libra. Um, you know, when we really see what that South Node in Libra is all about. But I do think we'll get a preview of it during this cycle this month because we do have an Aries full moon. We do have Mars coming into a conjunction with the South Node. So we will get our fair share of sort of um, purging of, um, you know, relationships that used to be just for, um, you know, the superficial value or, you know, the appearance of that friendship or just going along to get along a lot of those behaviors are kind of coming to a halt and really collapsing in favor of sort of more independent, um, you know, uh, self-assertion, uh, personalities, uh, prior priorities, more self-focused priorities coming in. But um, anyways, we also do have Mercury and the Sun forming that, you know, notable conjunction um, on September 6th um, in the morning Pacific time. So, you know, when Mercury and the Sun uh, form that conjunction that will be a clarifying moment within the retrograde on September 6th. Eventually, uh, Mercury will station direct September 15th. Now, again, Mars entered Libra August 27th and will be in Libra after, for all of September. Um, and then we do have Venus square Jupiter September 16th, which can be, um, you know, a very positive day, uh, you know, very fortunate, just kind of discovering other ways to, to extract value out of something or to attract value into our lives. Um, you know, potentially fortunate situations in any Venusian endeavors, whether it's the creation of art or relationships or, you know, even sometimes like getting more resources. Um, then Venus will square Uranus September 28th, uh, another sort of electrifying moment that's following up on some of the other Venus squares to Uranus earlier in the summer. Um, we do have Mars opposite Chiron, though, on September 24th. So Mars opposite Chiron will be a moment where, you know, you may be seeking to either invest in your healing journey or purge something, likely a relationship or some type of, um, you know, people pleasing behavior that's actually been um, kind of gnawing away at you inside. So we will be kind of forfeiting any attempts to appease others just for the sake of it or even avoiding confrontation. We're no longer avoiding those tough subjects because we've had all these retrogrades. We have all these retrogrades to really go within, do that internal reflecting, navigate those internal structure uh, struggles and come out stronger so that we can actually, um, you know, confront the issues in our lives and confront any toxic relationship situations and dynamics, confront anybody, uh, any situations in which we feel like we're being either overlooked or used, or even if we are maybe in a relationship just for the dopamine hit of it, all of that is changing. Now, I just want to mention also, Jupiter and Uranus, you know, they are kind of within about eight degrees of conjunction. That's the closest they're going to get this year because now they're retrograding and everything. But um, next spring, you know, maybe we still continue to get some previews of next spring. 
Because when Jupiter and Uranus form a conjunction next April, that's going to be the birth of um, and the flourishing of more technology around AI, anything you know, technology related, even science, innovation. There's a lot coming next spring in terms of these things. So we're going to see the acceleration of artificial intelligence, um, especially as that affects creative work because of that square to Venus. So anyways, um, I'm going to keep just quickly digging through some of these other high level themes. Uh, so again, um, I think the pace is continuing to slow. I really feel like we're at a low point in terms of energy in September. So again, we really have like six planets retrograde. Um, and it's also kind of exhausting because we have Neptune in the South node kind of maintaining this in conjunct aspect, uh, which can lead to people dreaming about exes or fantasizing about exes. But for the most part, uh, it's a feeling like exhaustion setting in around any relationships where we feel as though someone has been an energy vampire, or we feel even just confused about what relationships are really right for me right now. So um, you're going to be continuing to soul search and evaluate that um, because that Neptune South node in conjunct, um, you know, it's almost like every relationship may be exhausting you right now. And you're trying to figure out, is it me? Is it them? What, it, what exactly is going on? So you're just going to want to continue to meditate and introspect and um, kind of like revisit all of your relationships and kind of do a full review of them basically and think about you know am i in the same spiritual quest so to speak as this person um we also again luckily venus is forming those final squares with uranus and jupiter though so the month is not without some kind of like um, lucky maybe or fortunate moments where you get more perspective on a relationship or maybe you find a new community or you kind of adopt a, a more authentic value system that allows you and enables you to find those better connections. Um, with Jupiter and Uranus squaring Venus, again, we're continuing the theme of rapidly advancing AI and its impact on creative fields. Um, now, with all these retrogrades, though, and then Venus stationing direct, I do think you'll get firmer answers on relationships this month. Um, but with all the other retrogrades being active, you might not see the results right away. Uh, keep in mind, Libra, the eclipse season in Libra is coming, uh, you know, it's coming very soon. Um, and at that time, around October 14th, Venus will oppose Saturn. And of course, we'll have the South Node in Libra. So it feels like we're waiting for that other shoe to drop within relationships. Um, so relationships throughout this month and even October that aren't supported um, by authentic mutual love will fall away. Um, because, you know, Venus retrograde sometimes takes out some of the cheap thrills of a relationship in order to allow you to discern um, if there's true love sort of underneath it. And once that station direct happens on September 3rd, you're going to have the clarity to pursue the ideal relationships though. Um, and so ultimately you will know where your relationships stand um, by really, you know, let's call it the middle of September once Mercury station is direct because you'll have gotten through Venus retrograde. And again, maybe that eclipse in October will be another reset in some respects, but I think you at least know um, what your next step forward should be. Uh, so anyways, let's track the new and full moons. So September 14th, we have a Virgo new moon, and we're really working towards at that time our ideal relationships. Uh, so new moons are new beginnings, of course. And with Venus now direct, Mercury about to station direct the next day, and Virgo representing diligence and hard work. Um, you know, hand Venus square Jupiter, it's like this new moon, you'll be dedicating yourself to finding and building the dream relationship or that dream job because Venus is also income. Um, and with that square to Jupiter, it's like amazing perspectives are coming in and maybe lucky situations are arising and maybe even an expanding self, sense of self-worth. So kind of knowing, um, you know, again, um, that you deserve that authentic, mutual, reciprocal type of relationship that's sort of undergirded by that love. So now we have the Aries full moon. I just want to highlight that next. So there's an Aries full moon on September 29th. Um, so it's out of a sign of line, um, out of that axis that we just talked about with Virgo Pisces. But um, to me, like this is not an eclipse, obviously, but it is sort of maybe a preview of the eclipse season. Um, I think this is a full moon where people are just suddenly done with the situation are finally done with it. Maybe there is a breach in trust or someone's breaking the contract. So Mars is the ruler of that full moon and it's in Libra opposite Chiron and conjunct the South Node. 
So people either decide to purge some relationships that have been exhausting, or they will re release grudges or frustrations to come to a peace accord in a way that saves the relationship. So either way, though, the epiphanies will be sudden because Venus is square Uranus. And for some, this may be their entry into new communities or maybe investing in new types of art with that square. Uh, but also Mars is in conjunct to Uranus, so there's a bit of an awkward struggle going on. And with that Mars-South node conjunction, I'll talk about this in the forecast, but I think Libras especially. Libras are kind of done with the situation there. Like Libras are kind of, um, you know, fed up, you know, and that Mars-South node is just like, we're like, we're tired, we're draining our energy, and we're tired of draining our energy to make a lukewarm relationship work. So I know I talked about, again, you'll know what your ideal relationship looks like. And you may even know if a relationship can actually survive after the Venus retrograde is done. But I still think there's a couple more purges that some of you have to make, even if it's just to, again, release frustration, release any grudges in order to bring that relationship to the next highest level. Perfectly fine. Again, I'm not trying to spell disaster after disaster here. Um, but that being said, you know, for some people, there is still, they need a little bit of an extra push. Or it's like you already know that relationship's done by, by sub early September, but you don't actually initiate that breakup until late September. Or maybe for some of you who are single, um, you know, it could be a time when you, you, you enter that new relationship with a lot more self-love and self-acceptance and self-confidence. Now, when it comes to career, which Venus also represents, uh, you know, some of you may be breaking a contract with a company and going your own direction, maybe as an entrepreneur or something, or again, you're fed up with playing by someone else's rules. Uh, you know, so this could be the birth of a lot of entrepreneurs, um, especially utilizing that Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which I mean, again, it's not an exact conjunction, but within eight degrees, we're really talking about the birth of new technologies that allow people to monetize their passions. But um, anyways, key question here, what major relationship and career changes are you prepared to implement now that you have a better sense of your values, now that you have a better sense of like who and what do you actually love to do? Uh, sorry, who do, who do you love and what do you love to do? Um, you know, I, I think that that's really what's going on here. It's like, okay, I'm really grounded in my own values. Are my relationships aligned with those values? Is my career um, aligned with those values and so on? So with all that said, I'm going to set this uh, chart to kind of like a midpoint date, uh, just as a uh, illustration. So let's just look at, you know, well, we'll set it to September 15th as a midpoint. Um, happens to be that Virgo new moon, but I'm going to use this as a launch pad to discuss all of September. So what we're going to do is start off with Aries. And I want to clarify something before I go into this. So before I share the screen again, um, as I go through these signs, you want to prioritize your rising sign because, you know, your rising sign is really the most personal point in the chart. It sets the tone for the entire chart and the house system. So that will be most accurate. But your sun and moon signs can also be referenced here. So first reference your rising sign and go click on that one and then check your sun and moon. The reason is because of what's called a derivative chart. So you can actually create derivative charts where you set the sun or moon on the ascendant um, and that the sun derivative chart, the, you know, that will set the tone for how you express yourself in the world, your ego, your identity, the moon, the derivative chart for the moon will show how these, these transits are influencing your emotions, your internal sense of self, your comfort zone, your home, your family, et cetera. So sun, moon, and rising really make up and shape the identity. So the theory, my theory is that um, that allows you to look at all three. Uh, now, if you wanted to, you could create a derivative chart for your Mercury, your Venus, your Mars, and the transits would still apply to the specific domain of consciousness that those planets represent. So if I looked at a derivative chart for my Mars, which happens to be in Gemini in my case, you know, if I read this Gemini forecast or I watched this Gemini forecast, I would probably resonate with it a little bit, um, you know, but it's specific to how I'm motivated and how I'm deploying my energy and my desires. So I just want to clarify that. So you're going to see some astrologers out there saying you can only look at your rising sign for forecasts. That's not true. I've, I've tested this theory months after months after months. Every time it seems to be accurate for the sun and moon sign people uh, as well. So anyways, let's, uh, you know, let's share the screen and keep going. Uh, so uh, let's start off with Aries. Let me dial back 
this um, chart. So yeah, starting off with Aries, how is September going to affect you? So first of all, September, that first big moment, um, that Virgo new moon, September 14th. Um, so, you know, that's going to be in your sixth house, right? So the Virgo new moon, I think for Aries, could be the beginning of a new type of um, job, work responsibility, co-working relationship, um, or even a dedication to a new health routine, something like that. I like the fact that this new moon is creating a grand trine. Um, you know, this is creating a grand trine in earth signs. So it's going to be harmonious to the things that are going on in your second house of money and resources, which could be um, something innovative. Maybe you're, again, applying technology to creatively monetize something. Pluto in your 10th, um, it's a positive, maybe, transformation of your career. So I think for Aries, that Virgo new moon is all about work. I mean, it's really about supporting your um you know, like embarking on a new professional journey, um, really investing in a different, maybe even daily routine or fitness routine or health regimen. Now I will say though, at that point, Mars is in your seventh house opposite Chiron. So in terms of relationships, it looks a little bit messy if I'm being honest. So I think for Aries, um, once we get into that middle of September timeframe, Mars is in your seventh house. So it's like, Hey, I want a little bit more independence. So for some of you, um, you know, some areas risings, especially, you know, you may be initiating a divorce or you may be separating from somebody, or you just may be experiencing conflict in a relationship, or maybe you're realizing I, you know, maybe you're, you developed a romantic connection with somebody else in the fifth house with Venus down there. And that kind of, uh, threw a wrench in the system of your current relationship, or maybe you're just incorporating a lot of physical passion into your relationships because you have Venus in the fifth direct because you have Mars in the seventh. But I think that Virgo new moon in of itself is a little bit more focused on work process and work relationships. So I kind of like what's going on with your work life at that time, but I'm not a big fan of necessarily, it looks like it's a little high stakes in the territory of your relationships. Now, some of you may be encountering relationships that are karmic, relationships from past lives, or again, you may be surrendering a relationship and purging that contract which again, could literally be a divorce. Or for some of you, it could be a business partnership that you're ending. Um, and for others, I know this sounds contradictory, but it kind of depends on your Mars or, you know, it depends on how this manifests for you. But for some, it's actually the birth. Mars can be initiation. So for some of you, it's the birth of a very passionate relationship that has a lot of, um, you know, uh, you know, even physicality to it. Um, you know, or you're just looking for something new. Uh, because again, I like that Venus in the fifth and squaring Jupiter. Um, if you're an Aries who's creative at all, then this could be like the success behind a creative publication or a creative, um, you know, launch or release. Uh, but I do want to say that that new moon is kind of opposing Neptune in your 12th. So watch out for avoidance tendencies or escapist tendencies, because that could be really detrimental. So use that, use that new moon to really, um, again, develop a healthier or mindful daily process, commit to that new work project, that new job, whatever it is. But at the same time, um, you know, prepare to uh, almost be kind of asserting yourself in a new way, though, in your relationships, I think you're going to know which relationships can stand these conflicts, you know, can stand the test of all those conflicts and all that pressure. So I think you're putting your relationships through a little bit of that um, pressure uh, pressure point in, in not in a bad way. So anyways, I wanna talk about the Aries full moon because that's obviously even bigger because the Virgo full moon is in a weird kind of awkward relationship to your ascendant or your sun or moon. The Virgo, like Virgo and Aries are an in conjunct aspect. So they don't really have a lot in common. So the Virgo new moon, honestly, for some of you, maybe a little bit of a, you know, just a ship passing through the night. Uh, but the Aries full moon certainly will not. Um, the reason, of course, is because you are an Aries and the full moon is going to accentuate your emotions. It's going to accentuate, um, you know, um, and illuminate the things that you can no longer avoid. So I think that Aries full moon, September 29th, that's six degrees of Aries, is going to have you sort of... Um, almost in a position where um, you can't 
avoid those emotions and you have to be vulnerable and you have to open up and you have to face potentially some demons there. And, um, you know, we have Mercury direct at that point, thank God. So in your sixth house, you should be pretty articulate at the same time in explaining your emotions. But at the same time, Mars conjunct the South node in your seventh house, that looks almost guaranteed to be the purging of either a relationship or the purging of frustrations that allow a relationship to thrive. So you're either surrendering the relationship or you're surrendering the grudges or um, you're no longer wasting, right? You're no longer wasting energy on relationships that don't matter or you're no longer squabbling over myopics and pedantics, you know, like you're not being so petty at this point. Because Mars on the South Node, it's kind of like karmically, it's a drain, right? It's like, if you've been picking the wrong battles, you will know that at this point. Now, with Mars in conjunct to Uranus, there could be minor conflicts between um, values or even monetary expenditures within a relationship that could cause friction. Um, and to some degree, Mars is almost squaring Pluto. Uh, not quite, though, yet. Um, but, you know, it could you could feel it a little bit. Um so that could create tension between your relationship and your career potentially. Um, and then we, we did, we do have Venus square Uranus at that point. So again, so um, that looks like even maybe a part of you welcomes that sudden change in that relationship, or again, wants to even like go out there and find new friendships as an outlet, or maybe you're going to go on dates as a way to kind of move beyond that relationship. Um, Mercury will be opposing a retrograde Neptune though. Um, so expect a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of fogginess, a little bit of confusion, maybe in, in the areas of those work projects that you agree to, you know what I mean? Like that, that almost looks a little bit, um, you know, that, that could be a little confusing. So, um, let me just cast that chart again. So how tight is that opposition with Neptune? The Mercury Neptune opposition is not necessarily that tight. I think the Venus Uranus one square is a lot more, um, you know, noticeable there. So, anyways, um, I wanted to let's go back to, of course, um, Aries here. Uh, so, yeah, in summary, Aries, I think you're definitely on a journey here to um, release. You're releasing and purging some of your, um, you know, frustrations. Um, I know that Aries don't always like to people please anyways but uh certainly if you have been like a people pleaser or in or wasting your energy again like squabbling and fighting in relationships that aren't worth the efforts like that's done or again you're improving your relationships by not being so you know petty or my myopic anymore so anyways let's move on to taurus so taurus uh you've got the uh virgo new moon september 14th in your fifth house of creativity um, artistry, recreational sports, amusement, and fun. Um, so this could be the birth of a new creative project, or maybe you're, um, you know, maybe you're going on a date, uh, but hopefully you're picking up a, a new hobby or you're refining it further. You're committing to, um, you know, developing skills in a certain creative area. Um, you know, and you have at the same time, you know, you do have, um, that opposition in Neptune. So maybe feeling creative, uh, especially in front of an audience, um, you know, but um, also feeling maybe a little confusion around friends and friend groups. But um, I, I think, it, you know, the, a new moon in the fifth house is perfectly fine. Uh, Mercury will be stationing, um, you know, direct very shortly thereafter in the fifth house as well. So maybe, yeah, you, you know, I think you'll, you'll be able to articulate and think about what do I love to do and how do I invest in that? Um, now, Venus will be direct scoring Jupiter in your first house. So um, this could be, uh, you know, positive sort of, um, you know, exuberant moments in your home or with your family. So if you live with anybody, <clears throat> I kind of like the turning point that's going on there. Maybe you're going on a date, just out on a date with someone that you live, like you're cohabitant. If you're, if you're living with your partner, maybe you guys are going on a date. Um, with, uh, Venus square Jupiter, you also may just feel this sense of like inner confidence, like, like maybe if you lost your job, you could find a new job or you can make a lucky connection maybe through your family with Venus in the fourth. Um, or again, you could even find 
kind of get that you get this perspective more about where you want to live. Um, so I think for Tauruses, that Virgo new moon, in general, you have a little bit of extra charm, extra luck based on first impressions even, um, especially as it concerns entertaining people in your home. So if you're having like a house party or you're, enter yeah, I would entertain guests. And I talked about this in my 2023 forecast. So if you had, uh, if you had purchased my um 2023 forecasts back in uh, november of last year i would have told you this you know i would have told you there's a lot of shifts going on with property um thinking about who's my next roommates or where am i living or am i moving in with a partner um you're going to get the perspective you need i think by mid-september um and um also at the same time we do have mars conjunct uh you know uh, or opposite chiron um, in the sixth and 12th house, that to me feels like you are, um, you know, maybe resetting or purging some contracts that you've made at work. Um, you know, so if you have any frustration about what you're working on, you're facing a lot of friction in it, or your heart's not in it, you know, maybe at that point, you kind of feel like, you know, you're ready to walk away from that work project, ready to change your responsibilities, or you're just demanding new responsibilities. Um, and, you know, if I were a Taurus, I would actually be very thoughtful about what I'm dedicating my time to every day. What am I working on right now? Is it exhausting and draining me? I think for some uh, Tauruses, there's a little burnout here. I'm not going to lie. I think for some Tauruses, you want to avoid, you want to really, especially with Virgo being about work. Um, you know, if you burn yourself out throughout the beginning of September, this new moon is probably not so great. This almost is like, well, I need to bring fun back into my life because I'm overdoing it and it's actually impacting my mental health with that Chiron on the 12th. Uh, so really invest in, in that, in those, you know, those, those thought processes. And by the way, Mercury to some extent is even opposite Saturn. So, you know, that's kind of a bit of a, you know, maybe a serious conversations happening there a little bit. Um, but I think the Mars Chiron opposition will definitely overpower all of these things. Uh, we do have Venus sextiling Mars, though, so um, that's not so bad. Uh, I would basically say for, for Taurus, it's the middle of September. The focus is on, you know, how am I investing in my home? Um, you know, how is my home a place of well-being uh, apart from my job? And as a, as a corollary to that or juxtaposition to that, how is that illuminating the degree to which maybe I am a little burned out in my job? You know, because now that I've achieved that sense of, maybe well-being at home or with my family or with my relationships. Um, you know, how, how can I bring that sort of uh, balance to my, to my professional career? So next I want to talk about the Aries full moon, September 29th. That's in your 12th house. Um, so at that point, Mercury is direct in your fifth um, with a slight opposition to Neptune, but, you know, maybe still like thinking about ways to have fun and enliven yourself and your life. Um, but, um, you know, Mars really conjunct that South node at that point, opposing Chiron. So like I said, the Virgo new moon is a little bit more of a weak opposition to Chiron and the conjunction of the South node is not really at play yet, but certainly by the end of September, Tauruses are fully done, just, um, bending over backwards, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, you're, you're more willing to delegate responsibilities, tell other people what to do or to demand like a raise from your boss or to demand help, you know, and with Venus square Uranus, um, you know, you're going to have a different opinion even about how to get things done at work. You know, you may realize, Oh, there's a way to use technology to make my life easier. Or maybe I want a different job. You know, I mean, I think Tauruses throughout September are definitely um, in a possible position where they're switching jobs completely. You know, maybe some of the Tauruses are were impacted by a job change in, in August, um, whether it was in their control or not. And I think that for some Tauruses here, um, you know, maybe you're stepping into a different career that is a little bit more, again, um, balanced, doesn't completely drain you. It's more pleasing. It's more aligned with your values and things like that. But I want to call out the fact, too, that, uh, you know, Tauruses, you do have Jupiter and Uranus, um, you know, retrograde. So some of the power that you had in the summer to just make things happen and travel to new and distant locations and have fun, you know, some of that's weakened a little bit here. So I do think Tauruses are in a little bit of a 
um, you know, a, a, a slowdown, like I said. So a bit of a slowdown going within and thinking about how do I actually, um, you know, uh, how can I find that inspiration within right now? Um, and I can't do a million things at once. So I think you're slowing down a little bit and that includes in, at your work. So just take some time to um, relax as a Taurus because I don't think you can accomplish everything at work right now. So again, please, for the love of God, just delegate, delegate and um, think about again, um, am I, am I, accepting work that I don't have the bandwidth for at this point. Um, and again, how is that even affecting my mental health? So let's move on to Gemini's. So Gemini's, you have the uh, Virgo new moon, September 14th in your fourth house, primarily. Um, the Virgo new moon in the fourth house could mark a time in which some of you are moving or planning to move or, um, you know, just initiating a new home project or um, you know, just going to a family gathering or something, Mercury will station uh, direct the next day. Um, so you're ready to move forward and advance some of your, again, home projects or, um, you know, maybe even like, again, signing a contract uh, to move somewhere. Like this could be the time when you actually just find the new apartment and you haven't actually signed, or sorry, you haven't actually, um, you know, settled yet in there. Um, now we also do have that opposition to Neptune in the 10th house, Saturn's in your 10th. So hopefully by this Virgo new moon, uh, there's a sense that you've balanced out a little bit, a little bit of your work versus your life, because you had that Mars Saturn opposition in, in August. Now that was not easy. Uh, so for Gemini's that Mars Saturn opposition was incredibly frustrating because you really couldn't find a way to um, get to tend to all your responsibilities while dealing with conflict in the home at the same time. So it's almost like you probably had a cohabitant or a partner or a family member complaining that you're never around. And there are probably times when you wanted to move into your own place. So for some Gemini's, this is actually when maybe you broke up during Venus retrograde and you're moving into your own place because of that Mars transit. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that Mars transit may or may not have wrecked a lot of Gemini's, like home, like living situation, because you're probably fed up, you know, fed up with, um, you know, living with um, somebody who maybe you have mixed feelings about. But for others, you know, again, it could just be a new kind of home project. Um, you know, we think about also that Venus Jupiter uh, square, uh, you know, that that's between your third and 12th. Um, that could be potential sort of um breakthroughs with like creative writing or, uh, you know, really enlightening conversations with somebody that turn you on to a new monetization strategy. This could be even new spiritual values because Jupiter in your 12th, right? There is a spiritual expansion going on. You know, you are thinking big picture about um, purpose and there's different spiritual, even like modalities you may be looking into. And so the conversations are flowing here. Now, if you're into marketing at all, Venus in the third, I don't know. I kind of like that for getting your message out and marketing and communicating things in a way that is um, really beneficial to your business. Right? So if you're an entrepreneur or you're in marketing, I like your ability to broadcast things, publish things, um, get that message out in a way to convert people and turn you, you know uh, followers into buyers. You know what I mean? So um, I think Gemini's, you know, hopefully things are smoothing out actually a little bit. I think that Virgo new moon is that fresh start that you need in your home life. Now I'm going to talk about the Aries full moon, September 29th. You know, the Aries full moon in your 11th house of groups, community, social media, um, with Mars and South node kind of in your fifth um, opposite Chiron. Um, you know, to me, that would be a little bit of a emotional uh, peak with within a group or community, maybe purging a friendship, um, especially, I know this sounds random, but especially over some type of romantic uh, thing where there's maybe a love triangle or maybe you, um, you know, I don't know, like it, it doesn't always have to be about like losing a friend or anything like that, but I think there's some type of emotional um, moment there with a friend at the very least. And uh, the Mars um, Chiron opposition between your fifth and 11th, it's kind of like maybe you're motivated to do different types of creative things or you're motivated to um, 
be more romantic or something and you're you're finding a certain passion that maybe is kind of exciting and maybe you're realizing that someone in your uh friend group or your friend group generally like isn't sharing that new journey you're on or isn't embracing that new journey on you're on so you go to you start to focus on maybe your romantic life or maybe your passions and your creativity despite or you know some of the friendship struggles you have um but for others, maybe it's a big moment within a community where you just open up emotionally to somebody. Um, Mars will be in conjunct to Uranus. So maybe there's kind of a creative way in which you can bring some of your spiritual epiphanies into your um, into your art or your music or your acting. So I think Gemini's, you should be doing something really um, creatively interesting. And maybe you're engaging an audience with that full moon in the 11th. So, um, you know, with, with Venus square Uranus, finally between that third house and 12th house, um, again, creative writing, creative expression, um, and, uh, creative communication are all up for grabs there. And it could even be like an inspiring discussion you have with a sibling or a neighbor in that third house with Venus there. Um, but hopefully Gemini's you're fully tapped in to some type of less, um, you know, rational and more creative and intuitive kind of role. Because I know it's Saturn in the 10th right now, you've got a lot of pressure in your career. But I actually think September looks like an opportunity for you to kind of smooth out some of your home, uh, home situations, and also to find a way to kind of go with the flow in your spiritual life. Because I know a lot of Gemini's, and I've talked about this over, I've been talking about this for about a year now, but I want to keep emphasizing this. A lot of Gemini Risings have I'm into spirituality recently. I know there's a lot of you Gemini Risings who didn't even care about astrology a year ago or two years ago. But now that you have Jupiter and Uranus there in the 12th house, you have really have no choice but to look outside yourself and even to think more about maybe humanitarian endeavors, uh, think compassionately. But you know that there's something outside of you. You know that the, the matrix, this reality is not sufficient, that there are maybe other dimensions. So bring that into your creative communication. Bring that into your hobbies. Um, and, uh, you know, it's healing for you with that Mars Chiron opposition. So next, we have Cancers. So Cancer, you have the Virgo New Moon. September 14th uh, in your third house of communication, writing. Uh, you know, for some people, it's, uh, you know, commerce and sales and, uh, you know, publishing, news, neighbors, uh, but for most people, it's everyday communication, it's analytics. Um, so the Virgo new moon could be a new uh, writing project that you're embarking on. It could be, um, you know, new neighbors that you're in, encountering, um, a new analytical project that you're engaging in. Uh, but I think for a lot of you, a lot of cancers, you've been buying new books. Maybe you've thought about starting a sub stack. A lot of you cancers have been... Um, you know, um, investigating things, but communicating things as well. So for a lot of cancers, it's kind of like, again, think about that Virgo and new moon as establishing something in the wake of that Mars and Virgo transit. So during August, cancers had Mars in the third. So cancers were arguing a lot, debating a lot, ideating and writing. So I'm a cancer rising, right? And I started a newsletter in August um, because there was that Mars-Mercury conjunction. So for a lot of cancers, um, you know, you're ready to kind of like dial it up another notch in something writing or communications related. But if I'm being honest, for a lot of cancer risings and cancers generally, the Virgo new moon might not actually mean that much. Like Virgo in the third, the new moon in the third can be fairly mundane and, you know, not necessarily that big of a deal. But I will tell you, a lot of you, and I just got this download uh, cancers, a lot of you are going to be hearing about a job opportunity uh, around that Virgo new moon, September 15th or so, 14th. Um, so because Venus is squaring Jupiter, Venus in the second house, Venus in the second is about income. Jupiter is opportunity in that 11th house. It happens through a community or a connection. So there we go. Cancers around mid-September, that's when you can find the new job or at least get really positive news about a raise or a new salary, or that new position, that new career entirely. Now, you will have Mars at the same time, opposite Chiron in your fourth house, and the 10th house there. So potential for some uh, some arguments at home, some conflict with someone that you're living with, 
Um, but at the same time, you know, you may be living with someone who's motivating you to embark on a new career as a healer or to heal something in your career. Or maybe some of you are healing your relationship with a, a parent or an authority figure because Mars opposite Chiron, Chiron the 10th. I know a lot of cancers right now are, are in um, difficult positions, you know, where they maybe don't have a relationship with a parent anymore, or they've lost touch with a family member. Remember, that's because you have Chiron in the 10th. Mars opposite Chiron, um, you know, some of that could boil over, unfortunately. But for some people, maybe there is a um, a healing moment within the family. I think it's either or. I actually, I'm, I'm glad I caught that because, you know, it's a little kind of buried here in this transit. But like, I think cancers are really, really um, I, I either reconnecting with family or saying like, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done. And it might be in reaction to a trip you recently took where you visited your family or something. Now, we also do have... Um, Let's see. We have the Aries full moon, September 29th. Um, that's in your 10th house. So yet again, we have the possibility of, of a career change, of a career switch. So for some cancers, you may be, uh, yeah, you may be starting a new job, starting the job September 29th and hearing about the job September 14th um, or changing just your work responsibilities, even changing your, again, relationship to authority figures generally, um, uh, and, um, you know, maybe uh, establishing, your, establishing yourself as an entrepreneur um, or just doing something very public facing. So I, I think cancer is you do have a, a pretty monumental September in terms of like your job, job changes, relationship to maybe family. Um, and again, for some of you, maybe starting that new communications project or newsletter or whatever you want to do there. Uh, and then you have Venus square Uranus at the end of September again, which could be maybe yet again, manifesting even more income than you expected or finding a technological way to make more money more efficiently. Um, so, you know, and I think for some of you, maybe you're um, beautifying your home in a different way with Mars and Libra in the fourth. I mean, certainly it could happen, but um, anyways, let's talk about uh, Leo's. So Leo's, I mean, you know, you're pretty grateful here that Venus is direct. Um, but like, let's talk about the uh, Virgo new moon first. So you have a Virgo new moon in your second house. Again, money, resources, natural talents, things like that. Um, the Virgo new moon uh, could be the beginning, similar to cancers in a different way. Could the beginning of it be the beginning of a new job, a new salary, a new income, uh, something you're willing to work towards a little bit. And with Venus direct finally in your first house, September, it's like relationships are a little bit more, um, there's more momentum, more there, it's just less friction. Um, Venus square Jupiter, uh, some of you could be getting promoted, some of you could be getting recognized for something. Um, and there's just a lot of opportunity flooding in. So I like September for Leo's for the most part. Um, you know, I'm not really seeing necessarily a ton of things to worry about. Um, you know, Jupiter and Uranus will be retrograde in your 10th house. So, you know, I feel as though maybe some of the luck that just came naturally um, in the summer, maybe some of it does require more, more effort. But I think that generally with Venus Direct, you're pretty grateful. You've also hopefully, you know, figured out your long-term financial goals at this point, because you had that Mars-Saturn opposition between your uh, eighth house and your second house. So for a lot of you, um, you might be ready to claim that new, again, you're, you're, you're starting maybe a new job or you're thinking about your income differently in a way, maybe you're saving differently to achieve those retirement goals or those long-term goals. Now we do have Mars in the third though, opposite Chiron in the ninth. So around this time, I do see the possibility of like uh, pointless arguments, disputes, uh, but some of you could even invest in a writing project. But if you're a Leo, just keep your frustrations to a minimum here. Pick your battles. You can't fight about everything here. Don't be pedantic. Don't be myopic. Um, you know, don't squabble over useless things. Uh, with Mars conjunct eventually the south node, by the way. So let's talk about that. The Aries uh, full moon is on uh, September 29th, and that's in your ninth house. So the Aries full moon in of itself in the ninth, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's honestly, that might not be a huge deal. But for some Leos, you could be uh, stepping into your own philosophy, your own faith, your own ideas, your own uh, perspectives. 
So for some Leos, maybe you're breaking away from a religion or maybe you're breaking away from a certain spiritual practice. Maybe you're coming up with your own sense of moral codes and ethics. Um, maybe you're publishing something. Maybe you're coming back from a trip. Maybe you're going on a trip. Maybe you're embarking on a new collegiate journey. But opposite Mars and the South Node there, the Mars-South Node conjunction in your third, that to me is going to be a little bit um, like you're probably, you'll be fed up with arguing about and putting your energy towards those myopic debates and saying like, it's kind of like a forest for the trees moment. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can get into the details of something that you care about. So like, so be it, right? I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to my own and step into my own belief system. So, you know, that could be kind of healing for you. And also a lot of Leos will literally be educating themselves about a new um, healing practice. I see a lot of Leo risings venturing into a new healing kind of art, whether that's Reiki, astrology, uh, some type of divination. Uh, so, you know, I, I think that's totally fine. Um, you know, you continue to have Saturn in the eighth. So the soul searching kind of continues. But again, I think the prevailing winds are in your favor simply because we have Venus direct. Venus direct, Leos are going to feel that the most, I think. And um, you're going to feel as though it's just easier to make connections. It's easier to find the relationship you want. You know, if you're single, again, you may find that relationship, especially after Venus or Mercury goes direct. Um, and for others, you're just really clear on what you want. You're able to articulate that. But I do think as you articulate that, there will be some arguments and some disputes, um, you know, and you're probably going to have to just step up to the plate and say, you know, um, you're not bringing the value that I need. You're not bringing, you're not meeting my needs in this relationship anymore. So, you know, some Leos could, you know, go through another breakup here, but I think for most of you, it's just like that Mars in the third, maybe you will have some tiresome frustrating conversations over text or calling but it's like in a way where it's like, I got to move on. I got to live my own life. And now you're ready to go and venture into those new relationships. So I, I, I think that September should be pretty, um, pretty natural and smooth for a lot of Leos. Now let's go to Virgo. So Virgos, you have the new moon um, in your first house. So for you, that's a big deal. Uh, this will be very front and center in your life. So mid-September. Uh, we have a new beginning in the first house of, you know, either, um, you know, a new venture, you know, it could include a new job, but I mean, I think for most of you, it's just um, a new beginning uh, around, you know, how you express yourself, your identity, how you assert yourself. There's just fresh starts there. It could be a new, uh, it could be a new relationship. It could be a new friend group, or it just could be a new perspective on yourself. So a lot of you will be announcing maybe exciting things, especially the next day. Um, when Mercury stations direct in your first house. So so Virgos, right? Like you've been having a lot of frustrations. You've been experiencing a lot of frustrations because you've had uh, Mercury and Mars in your first house. So a lot of arguments. You've been at the center of so much conflict in August. But now you're kind of like, I'm ready to, um, you know, I'm feeling like less frustrated. I'm feeling like now I know who I am, you know, through those conflicts. I know how to assert myself. I know what I'm looking for. And so a lot of Virgos, you know, you're starting fresh. And I, I like that. Venus will be squaring, um, you know, Venus will be squaring uh, your, you know, Jupiter there between the 12th and the ninth house. Um, so relationships continue to be a little nebulous in the 12th house, but the relationship maybe to God or the divine is really strong at this point. Maybe karmic relationships have come up, past life relationships, twin flames. Uh, you know, maybe you're starting a relationship with someone who is very karmic. Um, now with Mars in the second house, um, you know, you're pretty motivated to um, make money. Uh, you may over identify a little bit with your earnings, like your ego and your earnings, maybe a little attached to attached to, um, you know, your income. But, um, you know, you may have some disputes over resources, but, um, you know, opposite Chiron in the eighth, there could be an enormous amount of healing of, you know, uh, where you, you feel as though you've healed, uh, 
you know, some of your inner demons. Because Chiron in the eighth, you know, can be a little frustrating. But you're getting in touch with, you know, um, you know, any, you know, persistent sort of, um, you know, challenges within your subconscious. You're doing the shadow work and maybe you're healing from that along the way. Um, but anyways, uh, now Saturn continues to retrograde in your seventh house. So relationships are still something you have to put a lot of effort into. But again, this is why I kind of like this Virgo new moon. It could be the birth of either a new self sense of independence where you're not codependent on anyone. Um, but also for some of you, it may even be the beginning of a new relationship because anytime you activate the first house, you're also in a conversation with the seventh house. And so uh, communication is moving forward. But if you start a new relationship around this time, I do think it's karmic. I think it has a past life connection. So now we have the Aries full moon in the eighth um, at the end of the month. Um, that looks a little bit more challenging because it's in your eighth house, right? And so for some of you, it may be this catharsis where, you know, you're purging some really intense emotions that have just come up and, um, and you need to let go of some frustrations in order to, um, you know, to move on, to cut the cord with somebody, to overcome, again, those inner demons, um, to feel more, um, you know, at peace, right? And to be able to conquer some of your fears. But for other people, I do feel like, you know, uh, well, number one, you know, again, I want to emphasize this, your fears may be um, assuaged and, you know, you may be able to release, again, some things that have been blocking you from taking that next step in your life. But for others, I do see this as a time where you may be a little bit fed up with, um, you know, uh, being stepped on in terms of your self-worth. So if you're being overlooked by anyone, or even you may feel as though, um, again, there's a financial frustration that's just bubbling up and boiling over in a relationship. And so you're communicating that with somebody. You're saying, you know, um, I want my own financial independence. And with Aries in the eighth, in the North Node there, some of you could be embarking on your own business venture. Some of you could become entrepreneurs around this time. Um, and I think that that could be that announcement that you're making either mid-September or late September. So again, all in all, to summarize this, for Virgos, September is um, a time in which you're moving past the BS. You're moving past the gridlock of August. I think August is way more difficult. I think for some of you, you're still putting some pieces in place in September with all these retrogrades, but hopefully you kind of have the wind at your sails here and the motivation to kind of um, start fresh. And then we do have Venus square Uranus at that time too, at the end of the month. And I think that, um, you know, there could even be at that time, uh, either a trip that you take leads to sort of a really exciting, uh, interesting relationship, or you um, have an epiphany about a twin flame or a karmic relationship, uh, you know, that um, it needs to continue or it needs to end. I mean, I think, and I think that also for some of you, there could be just some genius insights that are flooding in through your dreams or through your travels that ultimately are very creative. Um, so let's look at Libra next. So Libra's, um, you know, this is, I think, the one of the biggest months of the year for you. So let's start off, though, with um, the Virgo new moon is in your 12th. So I kind of feel like the begin, you know, what, actually, let's call it what it is. I think throughout the month of September, you're kind of fed up. You're kind of done. You know, you're kind of done with either a relationship or a job or, again, people pleasing, appeasing others, just playing nice. The reason is because Mars is in your first house or on your sun or on your moon throughout the month, basically. And it's going to form a conjunction with the South Node. And it's like, that to me is kind of like, I'm exhausted. I've been putting energy in the wrong places. And any energy you've been allocating, right? Like any energy that you've been allocating towards, um, you know, uh, again, just kind of, pretending to get along, pretending, like being a pushover or, you know, I'm not saying that, and I'm not even saying that every Libra is a pushover, right? Like I, I don't like to stereotype the signs. It's not like every Libra people pleases, but um, with the South Node in Libra, the predominant theme of the South Node in Libra is that 
This is the end of pointless compromise. This is the end of going along to get along. So when Mars enters your first house, you are adopting a newfound independence and conjunct the south node. You're completely purging any energy that you've allocated towards, um, you know, again, uh, that sort of saving face or um, just living to be like being insecure or trying to be accepted by someone, even if you don't like them or caring too much about their opinion. You're not as self-conscious anymore. When Mars in your first, it's like, it's go time. I have clear goals. If anyone's standing in my way, then we it's kind of like my way or the highway. You're going to be a little bit more uncompromised. So Libras are uncompromising in September. But you do have the Virgo new moon. Let's talk about that. September 14th. That's in your 12th house. So the Virgo new moon in the 12th, um, you know, is a little quiet. It's a little behind the scenes. Maybe it's a new uh, sort of mindfulness technique you've developed that you're committing to. Maybe it's, um, you know, a new perspective on mental health. Maybe it's a new form of spirituality. Maybe it's a dream that you have. Maybe it's a new creative vision. In of itself, though, I don't necessarily see that as like the most predominant transit for you this month. But that being said, you know, it could be the new, a new form of spirituality or a new spiritual vision that you have. Um, we do have, again, Mars opposite Chiron. That's going to be way, way bigger. Mars opposite Chiron. There will be conflict in relationships, and that could be friendships, romantic partners, business partners. And um, anyone who makes you feel small, makes you feel like you have a chip on the shoulder, makes you feel overlooked, like you're done with that relationship. So for, um, and this goes for anyone with the South Node in Libra natally, by the way. So a lot of people born, I think, in 1986 and 1987 are having their nod nodal return right now. And for anyone born in 1986 and 1987, I mean, I feel for you. I think a lot of you are getting divorced. I think a lot of you are getting, leaving relationships behind because you have the South Node in Libra natally. So you're realizing that um, that sort of natural default of, um, you know, people pleasing is no longer working. So anyways, Libras, this is a newfound independence. The Virgo new moon though, hopefully is actually a, a moment of self-care of mindfulness and looking to maybe work towards um, less escapist tendencies, um, you know, to trade that sort of binge watching television for meditation or something. Um, now with Mercury going direct also in the 12th house, uh, you know, feeling, feeling like you have more maybe clarity on again, your mindfulness and uh, mental health and your spiritual practices. Uh, Venus squaring Jupiter between the uh, 11th and uh, the 8th. Uh, you know, there could be fortunate new friendships that come in as well. So for Libras, I think you have the support network and the friends to get past that relationship that's been really toxic. Uh, so yeah, I think that it could be positive. And for some of you, um, maybe you're finding ways to monetize your social media, you know, yet again, or you're making more friends. I, I think for Libras, you're in a much better position than most signs for Venus retrograde. Um, some of you have had to purge some relationships, but I think for a lot of you, it's actually been pretty social. So let's talk about the Aries full moon. This is the big one. The Aries full moon is going to be felt like no other for you. I mean, you know, this is a preview for the eclipse in October. So by the Aries full moon, September 29th, you've fully broken off a toxic relationship. You've explained yourself, you've expressed your wants and needs, and you're realizing this contract is one-sided, it's imbalanced, it has to be broken. Now, for others though, um, if you don't want to end your relationship, you may just let go of maybe toxic feelings that have been pent up that have prevented that relationship from moving forward. Or other people are willing to assert themselves and their needs and their expectations more clearly so that the relationship can thrive and that partner can meet them in the middle. So if you're a Libra who has a fear of demanding things of people or setting expectations. This is the time when you set expectations and say, hey, I don't appreciate that thing that you do. Or I I want you to help me, or I want you to give me a night off. You know, I want I want to be able to go to that, you know, whatever thing. You know, I don't want to feel like I always have to put myself last. So I think for Libras, um, you know, there is a really, really big change that you're starting to make where you're no longer wasting energy on imbalanced relationships. And again, um, I think you will have the friendships and the social life here 
to get through that, to cope with that change. Because I think for some of you, that will be a very painful breakup, whether it's with a friend or a romantic partner or again, a business partner. Um, and for some of you, you could go solo as an entrepreneur. You know, for some Libras, maybe you're quitting. You're quitting a job here. Or you're realizing that you're making enough money off social media to go solo. So, you know, for Libras, you're kind of channeling your inner Aries on the opposite side of the axis by, again, no, like not wasting time with relationships that are draining you, being uncompromising and, and, and uncompromising and being confident. So now let's talk about Scorpio. So Scorpio, as you have... <clears throat> The Virgo new moon, um, you know, oh, and sorry, one more thing about Libra. Libra, you did have Mars in your 12th for like all of August. So yeah, your sleep hasn't been great either. So I think part of you may just be a little bit upset and agitated. So just be mindful of that. Like you don't want to be, you want to rein in obviously your impulses. But I can tell that, you know, throughout August, you've lost a lot of sleep. So um, anyways, Scorpio, you have Virgo, the Virgo new moon, um, you know, in your 11th. Um, so middle of September, you could be joining a new group or community, forming a new friendship, engaging a new audience, doing something new on social media, announcing something new on social media, investing in a new technology, again, joining a new affiliation or group that has a similar mission as you. Um, you're networking, you know, I think you're networking, maybe you're going to an event. Um, I think that's perfectly fine. Maybe you're going to a co like a, a networking event with coworkers or you're meeting other people in your industry. Um, and Venus, by the way, is finally direct again, right? And it's in your 10th. So uh, professional relationships and career should be thriving a little bit more again because Venus retrograde in your 10th has probably been a little frustrating for your career. You feel like you have opportunities, but they haven't activated yet. Hopefully they're starting to come through by mid-September. Um, and also you may be connecting with, um, new bosses or managers or reconnecting with a manager in a way. Um, now Mars is opposite Chiron and Mars is in your 12th house. So Scorpios, you do want to watch out in September for a lack of sleep, insomnia. You want to make sure your, your circadian rhythms are really smooth. Um, and for some of you, you're really focused on your healing journey, um, uh, you know, your mental health and how that, you know, affects your physical health and vice versa. You know, you're really on that journey, I think. And with Mars um, conjunct the South node in your 12th, you know, for some of you, you're going to need to catch up on a lot of sleep. I think for Scorpios, you need to watch your sleep in September. It just looks like a lot of you're kind of drained. So just really catch up on your sleep. Uh, mindfulness uh, exercises are key um and, and whatnot so um uranus and jupiter are retrograding your seventh house so some of those quote-unquote inspiring relationships are um you know you're you're kind of maybe um are less active in your life maybe you're picking and choosing from all the connections you've made recently um or whatnot um but overall i kind of i do enjoy this transit for this first half of september for again communicating in groups more easily um, on social media more easily. And then by the way, with Venus square Jupiter, I mean, again, career aspirations are, 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 you know, there's more, more momentum in the career. And uh, some of these people that you've met, like business partners, significant friends, maybe even someone you're, you're in a relationship with, maybe they're kind of pointing you to these really exciting career opportunities. So again, I, I think you're getting some, you know, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting some luck in your career that you didn't have in August. So now we have the Aries full moon in the sixth. So at the end of the month, you may be walking away from a certain work project. Uh, you may be uh, changing some of your health practices. You may be um, realizing how you've overworked yourself. So again, burnout is a big deal, big possibility in the end of September, um, you know, getting new perspective on your health. Um, and then that Mars South node conjunction in the 12th, Again, just be very balanced, very mindful of, um, you know, how your your self-care routine and things like that. But then Venus does square your wrongs at the end of the month. And, um, you know, even though you're tending to some of those health matters, there could be some exciting career opportunities yet again coming into the end of September. 
So again, I think the the, the high level here for Scorpios, um, you know, <clears throat> don't worry too much if you've faced a lot of setbacks or frustration in your career in August. Like there was an intentional slowdown. So you could reflect on what you really want. In September, um, I do think opportunities are coming through based on connections you've already made because of those retrogrades in your seventh house. And there is even the possibility of new friendships or at least the ease of communication in those friend groups. Um, so let's talk about Sag. So Sag, um, you have the Virgo new moon in your 10th house. So for Sag, um, you know, that Virgo new moon in mid September could be really positive for, um, you know, starting a new career, starting a new job, um, taking on a new work responsibility, uh, you know, and Mercury will station direct in the 10th. So maybe you're getting along with those authority figures again, because you had Mars in your 10th, right? So for Sag's work in August was a source of frustration, but now it's hopefully a source of success. So Mercury direct in the 10th, you know exactly what your next steps are in your career. You know exactly what the mission is at work on your work projects. Uh, you know exactly how to talk to your boss and your manager in a way that's low friction, that's more agreeable, things like that. So for Sag, if you've had a frustrating time in August, the career is um, also moving along a little bit more easily. Um, and again, I, I really see a lot of you starting a new career in the middle of September. Um, we have Venus square Jupiter between the 9th and the 6th. Um, you know, there could be travel opportunities through work or maybe trips that you take that... Um, you're, you're able to take now as a digital nomad. I know a lot of Sages have been frustrated about where they're living, their home situation. So for a lot of Sages, maybe you're finally even moving for work for a new job or you're traveling a bit more again. You're investing in trips in a way that you couldn't in August because Venus retrograde in the ninth, you've been revisiting your travel budget. But I think here, maybe you're either traveling again or um, you know, you're making more money. You're having more success in your job in a way that allows you to travel. So now we have Mars opposite Chiron between the 11th and the 5th. Um, Mars in the 11th expects some conflicts with friends, expect to want to be independent from a friend group maybe a little bit. And opposite Chiron in the 5th, though, uh, for the creative types, you could be writing music or doing creative things in front of audiences. And some of you could be putting energy into new friend groups, especially friends who are a little bit more vulnerable and allow you to heal uh, more easily from something, right? That's been kind of gnawing at you. Uh, but overall, um, you know, you still have Saturn retrograde in the fourth, right? So your home is not necessarily um, an exciting place when Saturn's in the fourth. There's a lot of work that you have to tend to, but a lot of you are looking for a long-term home, right? A lot of you are looking to, uh, you know, try to find that place that you can feel comfortable and stable in. And hopefully now that there's more momentum again in your career, you're able to realize that dream of living somewhere else, you know. Um, now we have the Aries full moon, September 29th, and that's going to be in your fifth house. Um, so I think of the Aries full moon in the fifth as a uh, passionate moment. Ro romance, right? Romance, uh, the honeymoon phase, uh, creativity, these things are all accented here. And so for some of you, um, it may be a date that you go on that is, um, you know, weirdly healing for you. Uh, but others are just having fun, making art, playing in a band, playing a new band, uh, finding a new friend group that you share a passion with. Um, and so the full moon in the fifth, I think, is like a cathartic moment that you really need. But again, keep in mind, Mars will be opposing Chiron and on the south node. So look, I mean, for Sagittarius, I kind of feel like you should evaluate um, friendships that have run in their course. So for Sages, I think you're breaking away from some friendships that were either toxic or draining. And maybe it's because you're focused on a new job anyways, you don't have time for them or you're traveling a lot or you're just moved. So I think for Sages, you are resetting your friendships in a lot of ways. Um, but I do think there could be like really new and exciting communities that you find as a result. Um, and with Uranus in the sixth, squaring Venus at that time, um, really random work opportunities, right? Like could come up that allow you again to travel or be a digital nomad. So for Sagas, be that digital nomad. 
travel, explore. And if that means that you're not investing enough in a friendship that was toxic anyways, so be it. But, um, you know, again, uh, I think you're just, um, you're re you're realizing what you really love. Sad is you're realizing like, what does your heart truly want? And, you know, what do I love to do creatively even? And what types of friends do I need to surround myself with that I can co-create with or that I can be really passionate about? So um, for Sages, I think the net net is mostly positive. So um, prepare for, uh, you know, sort of less friction in your career, um, a stronger sense of like the future of your career and how you want to activate that while also maybe reinvesting in your travels and finding new friendships along the way. So overall, I think it's um, actually, uh, and here's the one thing I'll, I'll say also, Sages may also be able to invest in their educational life again. I think a lot of Sages will not only invest in travel, but some of you might just invest in a schooling program, a collegiate program, or an online class that your company has actually granted you. So I think a lot of people will get like some type of mini certification um, or learn more about a tech platform at the at the blessing of their own company, right? So yeah, go get that training, you know, or um, just go sort of upskill yourself, close those skills gaps so that you could be even more employable, right? <clears throat> so for Sages, you've had that Venus around a square a couple of times over the summer, so use that Venus you're on a square to upskill and identify that new career. That's the, I think that's the crux. That's the crux of it for you for September. And again, maybe there's some new networking that happens as a result of that with Mars on the 11th. So now we have Capricorn. <clears throat> so for Capricorns, you're going to have the Virgo new moon September 14th in your ninth house. So for some Capricorns, maybe it's a new educational program as well. Maybe it's a new trip that you're taking. Maybe it's a new perspective on life. Maybe it's a new belief system you're adopting and working towards. Um, Mercury will have station direct by September 15th. So trips and travel should go more smoothly, less delays, less setbacks. Any struggles or friction you've had with education um, you know, should subside. Uh, but you will have Mars in the 10th. Uh, so for Capricorns, I think that there is a chance that you could start a new career or, or you could face a lot of stress in your career in September. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big fan of September for work. A lot of Capricorns are going to be asked to do a lot and they will risk burnout. So if you're a Capricorn, set boundaries now, try to prioritize projects, talk to your manager and say, you know, I'm feeling overstretched, overtaxed. If you can have that conversation, have that conversation because I think you're a little overstressed when Mars goes into your 10th, um, especially with that South node conjunction, you're going to be so stressed. You're going to be like, I want to walk away from this job. So some of you are starting a new job in September, October, especially during that eclipse on October 14th because of that burnout, because it's just not worth it. Maybe you're waking up at hours on a different time zone. Maybe your company's based in a different part of the country, whatever it is. Like, I think you're a little bit fed up, but some of you, could be starting a new career as an entrepreneur with Mars in the 10th, or you're just burning a lot of energy because you're passionate about your career. You know, that's not a crime, obviously. Then you have Venus in the eighth, uh, squaring Jupiter in the fifth. Um, you're going to be realizing that um, you need to indulge in, in, in some just fun things. So what's going to happen for you, Capricorns, is you're going to have a new perspective that work is not everything, that you need to take and set aside time for you know, the wellness day or whatever, if you can afford it, right? Like it doesn't have to be like you're going to some expensive spa. I'm talking about just like giving yourself time, like on the weekends, like don't work on the weekends. Um, so, you know, you're a little bit, again, I think you're a little overstressed in, in September, but as, but it's almost like a call from the universe to say, Hey, like, remember that you used to play these instruments or remember you used to paint just randomly on the weekends. Why don't you get back into that? So invest in your creative hobbies, allocate enough time and maybe in the eighth house, enough investments for that. Um, you know, and with Jupiter in the fifth, like you have the luck on your side in these creative endeavors. So why not? 
Now with Mars opposite Chiron, you may be facing a little bit of frustration at home, especially though. So Cancers and Capricorns both face a little bit of frustration in their home and their career because it's kind of like that Mars Chiron opposition a lot of friction, a lot of um, even feelings of neglect or lack of self-acceptance, but I think you can get past it. You can, again, purge and release those negative emotions and come to a place of healing. So now we have the Aries full moon, September 29th in your fourth house. That Aries full moon is, um, you know, a, a time where maybe there's an argument with a family member. Maybe you're moving homes entirely. Maybe you're finishing a home project or something. Um, maybe you're just taking a more independent stance apart from your family. Um, but I think just internally, you feel the sense of like, hey, like I want to do things for myself here, you know, because again, I'm, I'm a little burned out at work. Um, you know, I don't want to just invest in that. Venus square Uranus, let's just do something fun and kind of zany and wild and, uh, you know, random. So you're going to be feeling kind of like, you know, you want to, um, you know, again, invest in your creative side a little bit more. But I think for a lot of Capricorns, again, the possibility of moving is there, changing your roommate situation, or for some Capricorns, maybe you're having a family, you know, like that, <clears throat> that could be kind of like a moment of birth or something. Um, but um, obviously that's not going to affect every Capricorn. But uh, the only reason I mentioned that is because you have Jupiter and Uranus in your fifth. And the fifth house deals with that sort of create creation. So, um, so anyways, for Capricorns, <clears throat> I, I don't want to like overcomplicate this. I think the themes are like pretty clear. First half of the month, there's a little bit of travel setbacks. By the middle of the month, easier to travel. Maybe you're ready to move forward on an educational journey. Because um, that Mercury retrograde in the ninth could be you reflecting on like, what do I want to learn about? How do I close those skills gaps? So for a lot of Capricorns, you're maybe going back to like school or taking a little mini educational program, considering whether or not you want to invest in like law school or grad school or something like that. But my advice here, though, is like don't take the educational route just because you're burned out at your job. It's not like it like doesn't like make any logical sense, right? Just because you're burned out at your job doesn't mean that there's no job for you. So for a lot of Capricorns, it's almost a guarantee that you will be burned out at work, but think about, is there a job that makes use of my creative skills um, a little bit better? Um, and do I really want to sink like all this debt? It's like a five-year program or like a huge professional program. So I'm not saying you can't do that. And you should really look at your own charts to get all the way into that granularity of advice. So I'm speaking in broad strokes about every Capricorn, obviously, but generally speaking, I do think there's some truth to that theme of like, are you, are you taking the educational route or whatever purely because you're drained at your current job? But a lot of other Capricorns could be, again, starting your own company, going the entrepreneurial route. And with Mer you know, all that ninth house stuff going on, maybe there's a publication, you're marketing your new co company a little bit more. Um, so, you know, uh, and making some investments with Venus in the eighth in that company. So a lot of Capricorns, I think this is actually not a bad time to become an entrepreneur. Um, maybe you're going to be making some changes at home with, with the Aries full moon in the fourth to, to make that possible. But um, look, uh, I, I feel really like Capricorns are going to be unified in the comments below about this. I think a lot of you are, again, fed up with your job um, and you want something else. And again, uh, some of you would rather just build the dream on your own as an entrepreneur. So <clears throat> let's go to Leo, or sorry, Aquarius. Uh, so Aquarius, you have the Virgo full the new moon, September 14th in your eighth house. So that could be the ushering in of a new financial plan, a new investment, a uh, new perspective on your investments, uh, working towards a different financial goal, uh, investigating your shadow side, your subconscious in a different way. Now you had Mars and Saturn opposite each other in your eighth and second house for all of August, basically. And like, that created a lot of financial conflict, I think. So for Aquarius is, you know, you're still maybe sorting out, uh, maybe you've been trying to sort out some of your financial um, investments or even disagreements with a partner or a spouse. And with Venus retrograding your seventh, you know, that's been, uh, there's probably been a lot of havoc there and, con and, and uh, conflict and chaos in your relationships. 
So Aquarius is you've had a rough Venus retrograde. So for Aquarius is like all, a lot of your exes probably came back. You started rethinking all your relationships. Who can you trust and who can you not trust? And even again, financially, who can you, who can you trust? I think by this point, you kind of know like who you want to be around, who's in your inner circle, who are your friends, who is your romantic partner. And maybe you and your partner, if you survived the Venus retrograde, you're coming up with a new financial plan to work towards in the middle of September. Um, now, at the same time, you have Mars in the ninth, opposite Chiron in the third. Um, so that could be a little bit around, um, um, you know, <clears throat> investing in trips or travels or publishing or writing, um, but also facing a little bit of conflict with others over their belief systems, their philosophies. So if you're in any relationships where it's like, we don't have the same morals, we don't have the same values or the code, the same code. Uh, yeah, you're probably breaking that off. Uh, but also some of you could be investing in new classes, new education, um, or again, you're just resetting your belief system. I think with more South node conjunction, well, you know, Occam's razor would say some of you are, uh, you know, inve or, or tra you had traveled too much and you're just kind of like, drained from that so for some Aquariuses, maybe you're realizing i need to just take a little bit of a break after all those trips and travels um you know and uh at the same time i kind of feel like for some of you you're adopting a belief system that's just more independent um and you know again you have this worldview now that like my needs matter more than anything else so for some of you there's just a belief that i need to prioritize myself and I will not tolerate any sort of, um, you know, neglect or lack of reciprocity in a relationship, things like that. But with Venus Direct, I think Aquarius is you'll appreciate September more than August because throughout August, you have that Venus retrograde and, you know, they have complicated relationships. But there's less friction in relationships by this point. You're more aware of your next steps in a relationship. If you're single, you know, you're suddenly eligible to just find that new relationship. Um, or your relationship is just easier, less turbulent, and you're ready to build a financial plan around it. Um, you also have Venus square Jupiter there. So, um, you know, maybe you're, ironically, maybe some of you are taking a trip with a, with a significant other or a partner at that time. Or again, you're getting perspective on your relationships and where you want to live with that partner. I think for a lot of you, you're investing in a new financial plan in order to eventually move in with a partner or move to a new home with a partner. So that's really what that is most likely. Now we have the Aries full moon, <clears throat> September 29th um, in your third house. Uh, so that could be an emotional conversation or dialogue. That could be you just getting a lot of things off your chest um, in, you know, maybe starting or finishing a creative writing project or writing project generally, um, you know, uh, could be you finishing an educational program or an exam or something like that. Uh, but then with Mars in the south node conjunct in the ninth house, um, again, you'll be purging your old belief systems. You'll be maybe thinking about putting energy to different educational programs. Maybe some of you will walk away from an educational program and realize it's not worth it. <clears throat> so for Aquarius, is, you do have a lot on your plate in terms of what am I trying to learn more about? What techniques do I want to, you know... Um, you know, really master. Um, do I want to become a teacher or do I, want to, do I want to leave teaching? You know, in the ninth house, it's literally like what is going up into your brain so that you can get the right perspective and, um, you know, teach people and be a guide and train people on things eventually. So for a lot of you, it's all about education, but also financial investments and the financial investments that you do or don't make in light of your partnerships. So, and I'm if I'm being honest with you, is September like the biggest month for Aquarius? Is probably not. Um, it might be. I mean, Venus square Uranus at the end of September. Maybe relationship shuffles again. Like I think there's two categories of Aquariuses for September. There's one category that's like everything about my relationships changed. <clears throat> like I have a totally new set of friends, a totally new romantic partner, a new business partner. I'm even living somewhere else. Those are all liable to change, to happen. But there's another category of Aquarius who are going to tell me at the end of September, 
literally the only thing that happened is that I just started to think about the world differently, right? Which can be a big deal, but you know, it may be more internal perspective shift. Or I had to take a break from traveling because I was traveling way too much throughout the summer. <clears throat> so, uh, or I just had a, a meeting with my financial advisor and we reallocated my assets. Like that could be as small as it is. It could literally be that small of a month for you. But I wanted to give you the full scope of meanings because, you know, if you want to make those changes <clears throat> in your relationships, like this is the go forward moment. But if you're fairly satisfied with your relationships, like don't worry about it, you know, like, but at the same time, like if you really got wrecked by that Venus uh, retrograde, um, this is actually one of the biggest months of the year for you to find those new connections. So, you know, <clears throat> I'm a both and my Mars Gemini is kind of a both and type of thinking. This isn't going to be the one manifestation for everybody. This is why I feel pretty comfortable doing global forecasts, because what I think is there's a hub and spoke model where there's a core meaning and then there's sort of a uh, a sort of, uh, you know, a 360 degree sort of, uh, you know, sense of possibilities there. There's manifold meanings, but they're all connected to the same core archetype. So let's finish with Pisces. So Pisces, I think this is a big month for you. Virgo, new moon, September 14th in your seventh house. So by the middle of the month, let's just give some context, by the way. Pisces, you had Mars in your seventh house. You've had Saturn in your first house. All of August, you had that gridlock, that tension, that conflict between Mars and Saturn. That ruptured a lot of your relationships. That led you to quit your job. That led you to um, choose a more independent path. And now we had Mercury retrograde in your seventh house. So you're rethinking all of your relationships. But by the time Mercury goes direct on September 15th, and you had that new moon just before it, um, this is really like when relationships start to work again. They start to function. Um, it's easy to talk to your partner. It's easy to have those conversations. It's easy to even just like um, envision who your ideal partner is. So I think in the middle part of September, maybe you're starting a new friendship, a new relationship romantically, or a new business partnership. Um, or you're just coming to an agreement with someone in a consultative session or something, or you're consulting with a professional about something. Um, now, we also have Venus direct, thank God, in your sixth, squaring Jupiter in the third. So maybe some of you are starting a new job or starting a new position or making a lot of progress with your writing or your creative works, um, starting to monetize them, getting in, uh, an agent or something. Um you know, just, or incorporating passions into your work. Because Venus retrograde in your sixth, you realized probably that you weren't really in love with your job anymore. So a lot of you, when Venus goes direct in your sixth, you're like, I'm ready to take on a new career that's more creative, that's more in alignment with my passions. So uh, in squaring Jupiter, there could be some very positive um, uh, monetary financial windfall there where you get a new job that comes with more money because Venus in the sixth is like, I'm ready to commit to different work or more work and take that higher income that is associated with it. So similar to, I don't remember which sign it was. Oh yeah, cancer. Similar to cancer is you may receive good news that time at that time about a new job or a new salary or a new work relationship that just is more suitable for you. Um, I actually think that's, that's probably what it is for a lot of you. It's like, there's just a new coworker, you know, a new colleague that comes in who's just a lot easier to work with than, than some others. Now we do have the Mars uh, South Node conjunction coming up between your eighth and second house. So I think for a lot of Pisces though, you're purging a lot of internal resentment and anger. You're purging a lot of frustrations. Um, some of you may be tempted to start your own business or you know build your own company with Mars in the eighth or to even investigate your shadow sides. But I think for most of you, you're just letting go of some frustration. Maybe you're even letting go of some fears that have, blo have been blocking you from getting that job that really aligns with your passions, from building that relationship that you want. And now we want to finish off here with the Aries full moon in your second house. The Aries full moon in the second is a little complex. I mean, you know, it could just be that you realize how much more you value like your own independence or you value your own sense of self-worth and you do accept yourself fully. You have released that, that frustration. 
some of you may be changing your income or changing your salary or changing your job. Um, other people are going to be fed up with um, their financial situation and they're seeking a different type of financial independence. So I think for a lot of you, it's actually a little bit more about seeking that financial independence and not wanting to rely on that relationship or that marriage or, you know, uh, rely on that parent or I'm not saying that all of you are relying on someone else for money, by the way, but I'm saying you just want to like, cause I experienced Saturn in my eighth house, like the last couple of years. <clears throat> and I remember when I had Saturn in my eighth house, it's like, even though I had a job, I just had this fear of like, losing my financial independence if I was ever to lose that job, right? Um, and so I just started my own company and my own astrology practice because I felt as though, you know, that Saturn the eighth was telling me to build my own financial structure. Sometimes when Mars is passing through the eighth, we feel that way too. We're just motivated to like put energy into those eighth house matters. But with the South Node conjunct, it's like maybe you're breaking off a financial agreement. You're breaking off a contract uh, with an employer, with an agent, with a um, someone else, like, I think a lot of Pisces are breaking off financial agreements and trying to pursue their own financial independence. Um, you will have Venus square Uranus at that time. So, you know, um, I think it's possible. I think you could even use again, digital tools or technology to make money off of what you're already doing independently, use technology to become an entrepreneur, uh, you know, and whatnot. So I think for Pisces overall, you know, you do have Saturn retrograde in your first house, but Overall, I think Pisces, you are feeling more momentum in your friendships, your relationships as well. Um, you're feeling like maybe it's easier to monetize some of your day-to-day -day work. Uh, maybe you're starting a new job and just saying, I've had it with um, you know, a current financial situation or position that's been really toxic. Um, so anyways, I want to just conclude this by sort of explaining, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, what, you know, what did we look at today? You know, I, I know I went through a lot of material, a lot of different aspects and placements, but what is September really all about? Um, well, I think that September is really just the end of, um, September is the end of compromise. So uh, you, you've heard this. I talked about this through a lot of signs. Um, a lot of you are realizing that you've been dedicating energy in the wrong places. You have not been strategic about where you're uh, putting your, putting that energy and that effort. And any effort, any ounce of effort that's being wasted towards, again, pleasing others, um, compromising unnecessarily is going by the wayside, you know, and in a way that Mars Chiron opposition will create a lot of conflict. But as you purge those relationships, that job or that friendship, it's actually very healing for you. And you may even find other people who are on a similar healing journey in the process. So, um, so what, I think that Mars Chiron conjunction is a little tricky, especially with the Mars South Node conjunction. Um, so the Mars Chiron opposition is going to lead to, uh, again, some very difficult conversations. But with that South Node, it's the difficult conversation and confrontation that you need. It's the end of avoidance. So if you're an avoidance style uh, person, I think that you're going to have a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more guts this time around. And then thank God, you know, Mercury is going to station direct by the middle of September. So I think by the middle to late September, people are really able to communicate their truth, their message and their motivations in life, their goals. And it's sort of like a take it or leave it attitude there. So relationships are continuing to transform. That's just a feature of the South Node and Libra. But um, some things are going to boil over. Some things are going to come to a head. But it, it is that confrontation and that conversation that you needed. So uh, if you want a reading from me, you should get one uh, through the link down below. I'm booked through, I'm booked until late January, but I do have openings in late January and February. Um, so you don't want to miss my readings. They're some of the best. And um, also download my astrology guidebook. Um, it's an introductory level, very, very succinct uh, way to learn astrology, uh, the basics of it. And um, also uh, I will have some forecasts available uh, for 2024 by the end of the year coming in November or December. And finally, you should subscribe to my Substack. I have a newsletter now. So there's a paid model and a free model. The free model gets you a monthly newsletter. The paid model gets you educational content and horoscopes um, that are a little bit more um, detailed and granular than what I talk about on this channel. So anyways, um, I appreciate your time. And um, like I said, hang in there. It's a still reflective time with all the retrogrades. But um, I really appreciate your time today. And I wish you the best of luck in September.